Hi and welcome to Inders TV. Earnings season is on and Wärtsilä reported today its first quarter report of 2024. And here with me is the company CEO Håkan Angnevall. Hello Håkan. Nice to meet you again. Let's talk about Wärtsilä financial performance and other topics related to you. But let's start the ladies, uh, the quarter numbers. Yes. What were the highlights? I think the uh, overall continuous journey to meet our financial targets. So now we came in with a double digit 10% uh, comparable operating margin. And the other element that we we continue to see a strong order intake. I mean, organic order intake up 17% quarter on quarter. What is driving this huge momentum, if I can say, say so? I, I think it's, it's, it's our strategy playing out. Mm. But if we, if we start on, on the marine side, uh, it's a high level of utilization of vessels uh, in general, uh, and certainly in our core segments, which is about crews, ferries, offshore specialty vessels, so high level of utilization. The other piece of that equation is also the decarbonization transition, because you know, last year the new IMO rules kicked in, carbon intensity index is really driving the st- strategic thinking about among fleet owners, uh, 1st of January this year, uh, carbon tax is introduced in the EU, mm. by EU in the, in the maritime sector. So, so there is a lot of focus on decarbonization. And it basically thinking about new vessels, you know, how, how do you build in fuel flexibility? Uh, so it's about new fuels and how you combine that, but also retrofits. There, there is a fleet out there in the world of about 100,000 vessels, and many of them, needs to be retrofitted and and that also gives us a, a, an opportunity because it could be upgrade to the new fuels introducing batteries and hybrid solutions or actually derating and just making them smaller because one thing is to to, to cruise slower so to say so mm. that's the the key drivers on 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 the marine side on the energy side it is the uh you know shift in the world to more and more renewables with the balancing power, we had some good uh, uh, thermal balancing orders in Texas, U.S. Um, a little bit slower this quarter on order intake on 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 storage, but it's more we took a periodization uh, thing, so we are not overall concerned. We we see growth opportunities, and and both in marine and then on the services continue to grow. We have this strategy concept of moving up the service value ladder, mm. so moving from more transactional to agreements. And it's really playing out in a good way. You have uh, spoken many times that this is a journey, and it seems that you are taking the first step, if I may so. say so. Well, it's not the first, yeah. but, uh, but it's the early steps. And, and, mm. uh, but we continue in a good way, and there, there, there will be ample opportunities as we go forward. Yes. Uh, if we look at your cash flow, it continued to show good development in, in the quarter. So what have factors have been driving that improvement? Yeah, so... The, more than 200 million cash flow. And I think that is pretty remarkable after all. So we had a very strong cash flow in, in, in Q4. So, so there are a number of factors that, that is driving the Q1 cash flow. Hmm. I mean, uh, one thing is because of our positive order intake, we also have down payments. So, so that is uh, customers paying down uh, it, it, on, on the contract. Uh, we uh, we worked on our, our networking capital, so working with capital efficiency. That that is the you know step by step journey, and 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 it certainly continues, so to say. Mm. And then I would say the increased service sales. That is also uh, you know the cash turnover is quick on the service sales, so that is also contributing. So those are the three factors. Yes. You have spoken before that there is uh, four value ladders in the service yeah. business, and you want to climb to the higher uh, yep. ladder. What kind? What is going on at the moment? How well you have performed on this level? Yeah. So, so, so basically, the, the, you're right. Uh, that we, I mean, the ideal world, we move everybody from transactional law, uh, which is the first step, yes. all the way to the fourth step. But in reality, it's, it's a lot about moving some customers from the first to the second, some customers from second 2.1 to second 2.2. Mm. So, so it's not... It's a gradual journey, and, and it's working out. It's one of the major growth drivers. Uh, we see on, on the fourth step, on the performance-based contracts, it's still a smaller share of our of, of business, but it is growing. And, and, and still, the fundamentals, we have about 30% of, 
of a whole fleet under service agreement coverage. Mm. So, of course, there is ample growth opportunity. And I think the key metric still holds, and that is the renewal rate of our agreements. It's over 90%. And for me, that is the, you know, the, the ultimate proof point that uh, our customers are appreciating. Yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't agree. They, they wouldn't renew. Yeah, that's good to hear. Uh, then to Marine Prospect, what are your uh, prospects in terms of orders in, for key vessels right now? I mean, it, it is about our core segments. So yes. I talked about it, cruise, ferries, offshore specialty vessels. There, there is a lot of opportunities. Those segments, and that goes back to the clocks on data, mm. you know, the industry data. That Those segments, if, if you take the coming five, six, seven years, are predicted to grow by double digit, whereas the rest of the marine industry is more single digit, maybe two or three percent. Mm. And, and we see that growth in our core segments playing out. And the other one we talked about it already is the decarbonization with, with the upgrades and the opportunities. That's great. Mm. Okay. How you see your market shares evolving? Now? How, why you win the contracts when you win? I think that. Uh, you know, we we have we are industry leading in fuel efficiency and fuel flexibility. Sure. I would say we have the broadest portfolio in the industry for the new green solutions, and and that's positive. I mean, we we, we have in the marine side. I would say we have normally about 40, 45 percent uh, market share on four stroke. Uh, that market share is even stronger on the new type on the engines for the new fuels. There we are talking about seventy percent. Mm-hmm. So so uh, I think we are we are slowly eating market share. Yeah. If we go to energy storage business. And, uh, and I would say, yeah. why, why are customers chosen us? So, so we have a great product portfolio. But the other element, we have a great service support for our customers. Because at the end of the day, what, what the customers value is uptime reliability and, you know, that they can sleep mm. you know, in the night, so to say, and rely that the equipment is operating. So, so the service business is, is a really vital component of that offering. All right, let's continue uh, to any storage business. Uh, how do you see the market outlook at the moment? What are the factors that is driving? So, so storage is growing very fast, mm. and, and there are ample growth opportunities all over the world. We are focusing, as part of our strategy, on certain geographical segments. For us, it's a lot about US, Australia, UK, a couple of Benelux, a couple of countries in Europe. Mm. And, and, and we see ample growth opportunities. Uh, it's it's very much driven by the increased share of renewables and therefore the need for balancing power mm. and it's a clear trend. Do you want to continue, continue your next no, question? No, so and, and I mean, so order intake was a bit slow on the mm. storage side in Q1, but that is more of a periodization thing than than a you know a trend shift or anything. Yes, I understand. Uh, what about the profitability? There. So, so profitability, uh, comparable operating margin at ten percent, very encouraging. It's a step in the right direction, but of course, you know we had a, a very strong mi- mix. We talk about the mix, and that's the you know the share of service business in relation to uh, to new build. Yeah, because the profitability on the service business is higher than the new build, and in, in this quarter we actually had sixty three percent of the overall sales were service sales, mm. and that is unusually high. Normally it's around fifty, so that contributes in a, in, in a positive way to to, to the increasing uh, operating margin. On the other side, we had a low sales, so we have lower operational leverage, and we still came out at ten percent. So that's why I say Q one was really a step in the right direction. It 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 kind it's a proof point that we are moving in the right direction, but we are not where we need to be at our 12%, and we still have a gap in the journey to take. Yes. Uh, I still want to ask the profitability of energy storage business. Yes. How would that have development? So, so I mean, we we, uh, we we follow it, and we, we communicate a 12-month rolling, and it's mm. still positive. And, and, and I would say uh, it's going in the right direction. Of course, in, in Q1, considering the sales was down, it was a bit more challenging but the general trend is clear the 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 the, the profitability of, of storage is improving i know that many analysts have already asked this but what about their strategies reweaving yeah. on that Do so you have anything to we we launched that um last year mm-hmm. and 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 we are still working on it we didn't set a you know a fixed time when to come back we are still not doing that so that mm. the review is ongoing and when we when we have when we have made up our mind and we are formulate, we will come back. But uh, for now, it's ongoing. Yeah, that's clear. Uh, final ask uh, questions. 
question. Uh, if we look at the whole world economy, there are many uncertainties, uh, conflicts all over the world. So is there, what are the main risks that you think that could uh, affect you the most if they will realize? So, so I mean, of course, the interest rate and the volatility in the interest rate, I think that that is always a, a concern for all investors. Mm, and, yes. you know, and, 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 and we do see, I mean, the trend now is that the interest rates are coming down and we mm. see that stock prices are up. We hope so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, 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 of course, interest rate will affect us mm. uh, the, and the volatility in the same. I mean, the current geopolitical uh, tension areas, Russia, war on Ukraine, Middle East, has has no sig currently no significant impact. I would say logistics mm. chains are fairly intact, although you know Suez is closed and Panama Canal capacity has gone down. I think it's it, the logistics flow is still there. There is still about a little bit of the inflation going on 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 on, on uh, work compensation, so to say. But that is more also stabilizing in in, in general, so to say. So I, I think it's it's. The, the major thing is, you know, where is the general economy going? So far, we, we see it positive. The big, you could say, impact for, for, on, on that from a macro perspective is, of course, how, how fast the decarbonization journey will take. And that's yeah. not, uh, it's not a quarter or two, but yeah. is it, are we talking five, 10 years or 20 years? Yeah. And I would say the faster the transition, the faster tr the transition uh, will go, the better it is for that, and the better it is for the world, but also the better it is for for Vatsal and Vatsal shareholders, because we have so much to offer with the solutions that that we can bring to our two industries. Yeah, uh, it seems that the momentum is strong and keep continuing that. Yeah, no, the the, I mean we we have we we have mm. you know we we reiterated our demand outlook, mm. basically looking at twelve months from now, and and uh, we, we said that we expect demand to to be better than the previous 12 months. So yeah. we have a positive outlook, yeah. Thanks, Hokan. Thanks a lot. Thank you.